Tomo News presents Cures for Cancer. Malaria vaccine could lead to general cure for cancer. Scientists researching a vaccine against malaria in pregnant women may have accidentally discovered an effective weapon against cancer. Scientists from the University of Copenhagen and the University of British Columbia have identified that the carbohydrate the malaria parasite attaches itself to in the placenta of a pregnant woman is identical to a carbohydrate present in cancer cells. Scientists have created the protein that the malaria parasite uses to attach to the placenta in a laboratory and have added a toxin. The combination of the malaria protein and toxin finds cancer cells, is absorbed, then the toxin is released inside, causing the cancer cells to die. Research groups from the two universities have tested thousands of samples, from brain tumors to leukemias, and have found that the malaria protein is able to attack more than 90% of all types of tumors. The drug was tested on mice implanted with three types of human tumors, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, prostate cancer, and metastatic bone cancer. The mice that were given doses of protein and toxin showed far higher survival rates than the untreated mice. Researchers are now working towards being able to conduct human trials. They say the earliest possible time frame would be in four years. Scientists find antibody that makes cancer cells kill each other. A team at the Scripps Research Institute has discovered a new therapy that could prove to be a safer way to battle cancer. Acute myeloid leukemia, AML, is caused by an overproduction of immature white blood cells that are unable to function properly or fight infection and interfere with normal blood cell production. Current cancer treatments stop the growth of cancer cells but almost always damage other healthy cells. Scientists found that applying certain antibodies to AML cells triggered them to mature into natural killer cells that support the immune system. These natural killer cells then destroy related AML cancer cells, but leave unrelated cancer cells alone, prompting researchers to call the technique fratricidin therapy. In a single day, natural killer cells in one sample destroyed 15% of their cancerous kin, suggesting that a safer, more effective form of treatment could be well on the way. The Scripps team is working to be able to test the new therapy on human patients next year. Israeli scientists show how melanoma spreads in the body. Scientists at Tel Aviv University have made a landmark discovery on melanoma, a brutally aggressive form of skin cancer that kills a person every 52 minutes. Melanoma forms in the epidermis of the skin. At this stage, the cancer cells are not able to spread as they have no access to blood vessels. Researchers discover that the cancer sends out tiny vesicles containing microRNA to the dermis layer. The vesicles induce changes in the dermis, including features of cancer-associated fibroblasts. The changes enable the dermis to absorb the cancer cells. The real threat of melanoma begins when the cancer cells have access to blood vessels and are spread to vital organs such as the brain, lungs, liver, and bones. The team also found two chemicals that could stop the spread of melanoma in its initial stages. One is capable of stopping the vesicles from being sent to the dermis, and the other capable of preventing the reaction to the vesicles in the dermis itself. Immunotherapy treatment shrinks cancerous tumors. Combining two immunotherapy treatments shrank cancerous tumors by a third in 58% of cases in a 945 medical patient trial published in the New England Journal of Medicine. The body's immune system uses T cells, or immune cells, to target and destroy infected cells. However, cancer cells produce a certain protein which allows them to avoid detection from T cells. Known as PDL1, this protein acts as what scientists have called a secret handshake between it and its T cell counterpart, PD1, to avoid detection. Though if this handshake can be disrupted, as the nivolumab drug does, the cancer cell becomes detectable to T cells. The other drug, ipilimumab, stimulates T cells to target cancer cells by blocking their off switch known as CTLA4. The combination of both drugs enable the immune system's T cells to target and destroy cancerous cells. Experts also warn that combining the two treatments can cause severe side effects such as diarrhea and fatigue, as well as elevated liver enzymes and other symptoms. According to Bloomberg, the combined treatment would have an annual cost of more than $250,000 at current rates. T-cell therapy could teach the body how to kill cancer. Scientists in the US and Italy are developing a revolutionary cancer therapy that would teach the body to destroy cancer cells on its own, reducing the need for debilitating chemotherapy treatments. 
T-cell immunotherapy trials have shown great results in the U.S. study so far, with 94% of terminal leukemia patients going into remission. More than 40 patients with other blood cancers were also treated, and more than half of them were left cancer-free. The therapy is similar to a treatment given to British baby Layla Richards last year. Layla Richards was diagnosed with acute lymphoblastic leukemia, a disease in which the bone marrow makes too many immature lymphocytes. In a healthy child, the bone marrow makes blood stem cells that become myeloid stem cells or lymphoid stem cells, which then develop into mature red blood cells, platelets, or white blood cells. However, in a child with acute lymphoblastic leukemia, too many stem cells develop into lymphoblasts, B lymphocytes, or T lymphocytes, which are in fact leukemia cells. The leukemia cells are not able to fight infection, and they take up space for healthy blood cells in the blood and bone marrow. This may lead to infection, anemia, and easy bleeding. Last year, doctors in London used a new gene editing technology known as Talon on Layla. The technology uses molecular tools that act like scissors to cut specific genes in order to make the T cells from healthy donors behave in two specific ways. First, the cells are able to become invisible to a powerful leukemia drug that would normally kill them. Second, they are reprogrammed to target and fight against leukemia cells only. A similar treatment is being tested in Seattle. The new technique involves removing T cells from patients and genetically modifying them by adding chimeric antigen receptors, or CARs, from genetically engineered mice, which are able to target cancer. The modified T cells are then injected back into the patient's body. In a second major breakthrough in Italy, researchers have discovered that memory T cells can stay in the body for at least 14 years. This means they could be trained to fight cancer, as well as to remember the disease in case it comes back, allowing them to defeat it again. The latest discovery gives hope for the development of a vaccine-style drug that could stop cancer from coming back once it has been defeated. Cuba developing a vaccine for lung cancer. America wants in. What's the first thing you think of when you see someone puffing on a stogie? Yup, Cubans, the finest cigars the world has to offer. But it may surprise you to find out Cuba is actually becoming known for its success in treating lung cancer. A new vaccine, Simovax, has been in development in Cuba for a quarter of a century. Simovax targets a growth factor in the body called EGF, which allows cancer to survive. By attacking EGF, the cancer starves and its growth slows, extending a patient's life for as long as an extra year and a half. Early studies with Simovax have shown minimal side effects like nausea, fever, and vomiting, but it's a small price to pay for less cancer. The drug's been used to treat 5,000 cases of lung cancer worldwide, but with FDA approval pending, testing could still be a ways away in America. After the U.S. made nights with Cuba in December 2014, New York Governor Andrew Cuomo went on a trade mission to Havana last year to get the ball rolling to bring the drug to America. Now, there's more hope than ever for the estimated 224,000 plus Americans living with lung cancer. Gene-edited immune cells clear babies incurable leukemia. A baby girl in Britain suffering from leukemia has become the first person in the world to receive an experimental gene-editing procedure that miraculously reversed her cancer. Layla Richards was diagnosed with acute lymphoblastic leukemia when she was just 14 weeks old, a disease in which the bone marrow makes too many immature lymphocytes. This is the most common type of cancer in children. In a healthy child, the bone marrow makes blood stem cells that can become myeloid stem cells or lymphoid stem cells, which then develop into mature red blood cells, platelets, and white blood cells. However, in a child with acute lymphoblastic leukemia, too many stem cells develop into lymphoblasts, B lymphocytes, or T lymphocytes, which are in fact leukemia cells. Leukemia cells are not able to fight infection, and they take up the space for healthy blood cells in the blood and bone marrow. This may lead to infection, anemia, and easy bleeding. Doctors in London performed a new gene editing technology known as Talon on Layla, which had previously only been tested on mice. The technology uses molecular tools that act like scissors to cut specific genes in order to make T cells from healthy donors behave in two specific ways. First, the cells are able to become invisible to a powerful leukemia drug that would normally kill them. Second, they are reprogrammed to target and fight against leukemia cells only. Layla spent several months in isolation due to her extremely weak immune system after the procedure. After the leukemia cells were confirmed to have been eliminated from Layla's body, she was given a bone marrow transplant to replace her entire blood and immune system. The treatment was prepared by scientists at London's Great Ormond Street Hospital, University College London and French biotech company Selectus. Selectus is going to fund full clinical trials of the therapy starting next year. 
New blood cancer drug passes critical trial. A new blood cancer drug, a potential alternative to the common chemotherapy drug Melphalan with fewer side effects, has passed a critical mid-stage trial. Blood cancer originates in bone marrow, crippling the production and function of blood cells. Multiple myeloma is a form of blood cancer caused by the proliferation of cancerous plasma cells. As such, malignant cells multiply, crowding out normal blood cells. Chemotherapy is one of the most effective forms of treatment for blood cancer, but it often leads to renal failure and cardiac complications. The new drug, Captisol-enabled Melphalan, does not contain propylene glycol, the chemical believed to be responsible for the side effects. The drug is now being tested in patients with multiple myeloma, undergoing stem cell transplants. Around 22,000 cases of multiple myeloma are diagnosed in the United States each year. Elephant gene could help in the fight against cancer. In a study published this week in the Journal of the American Medical Association, scientists revealed they have discovered a gene in elephants that could help the fight against cancer. Elephants, similar to humans, have lifespans of around 70 years or more, but they have 100 times more cells than humans and their cells rarely mutate into cancer. Only 4.8% of known elephant deaths are related to cancer, while for humans, cancer-related deaths are between 11 and 25%. Scientists have found that African elephants have 20 copies of a gene called TP53, which creates a protein that suppresses tumors. Humans, on the other hand, inherit only one TP53, one allele from each of their parents. If one of them is defective, cancer is certain to develop sooner or later. When there is DNA damage, the gene churns out copies of its P53 protein, and it either stops the cells from dividing so the DNA can be repaired, or destroys the affected cell so it won't pass on potentially harmful mutations. Tumor biology specialist Dr. Trevor Graham told the LA Times that reinforcing the protection offered by TP53 in humans would be enough to prevent human cells from becoming cancerous. A new drug treatment could bring hope to thousands of people suffering from advanced melanoma. Advanced melanoma can't be surgically removed and traditional treatment can only slow down the growth of the cancer. The new treatment, which combines the two drugs ipilimumab and anti-PD-1s, can shrink or stop the melanoma from growing. Normally, the body's immune system attacks cancer cells, but a certain protein in the body's T-cells eventually slows the immune system's attack. The new drug stops this from happening. Patients only need to receive a single treatment, and then the immune system becomes better at attacking cancer cells. The drug has already been licensed in Europe, and scientists believe that advanced melanoma could become a curable disease within the next 5 to 10 years. India, the new testing playground for many drug companies. The human papillomavirus, or HPV for short, is a virus which can cause cervical cancer in women and can be carried and transmitted by men. Cervical cancer used to be the leading cause of cancer death for women in the United States. But in recent years, this number has dropped significantly due to early testing and improved treatment. Now there will be a vaccine offered for HPV, which can be administered to children as young as nine. Gardasil, licensed by the drug company Merck, has been approved for use in the United States and will be available in other Western countries by next year if not earlier. However, a recent scandal has revealed that Merck, among other Western drug companies, have been using Indian children as human guinea pigs, targeting families who are poor, uneducated, illiterate, and desperate. Among them is Aman Doan, age 16, who received the test vaccine. His family was told by doctors that it would cure and protect him from all diseases, including malaria, and that the doctors would pay his family 16 US dollars. That is potentially 20 times what many poor rural families survive off for a day. After receiving the injection, Aman noticed that he lacked energy and was not able to run without feeling sharp pains in his stomach. He also lost his appetite and became very weak. His family didn't know what to do and they were not offered any aftercare and couldn't afford to pay for tests to find out what was wrong with Amon. Whether by design or coincidence, many of the test trial participants were poor and uneducated. Other children also suffered from weakness, headaches, late periods, dizziness, and nausea. The other thing they had in common was the fact that none of them knew they were taking part in test trials. Dr. Jean is an Indian doctor who faces accusations that he ran drug test trials for international companies without patient consent or without fully informed the patients of the drugs they were being administered. The children trusted their parents, who in turn trusted the doctors. Many of the parents were unable to even sign the consent forms and only marked them with a thumbprint. Dad separated from dying daughter because of cannabis oil controversy. In Australia, Adam Kosler, the father of a very sick little girl, has been separated from his daughter and faces possible jail time. Rumor Rose Kosler, age two, is Adam's daughter, and she has stage four neuroblastoma, a type of cancer that forms in nerve tissues. 
Given her age and the advanced stage of her cancer, the two-year-old has a 50% chance of survival. Her father, Adam, began giving her controlled doses of cannabis oil to counteract the side effects of chemo and radiation therapy. According to Adam, his daughter's appetite came back, which helped her to gain weight, and she had the energy to spend time outdoors instead of lying in bed all day. But last week, when Adam drove his daughter to a Brisbane hospital to seek further treatment, he was arrested by police and charged with giving dangerous drugs to a person under 16. After Adam was arrested, his daughter was taken off the cannabis oil, which caused her to have seizures and she was hospitalized. The initial terms of Adam's bail included a restraining order against him visiting his daughter. Rumor Rose's mother is still with her, as she and Adam had separated. A few days ago, a judge granted Adam supervised visits with his daughter, but despite the court order, the hospital turned the father away after he drove four hours and waited even longer to see his little girl. Adam will face the court again next Tuesday. Kanagawa police arrested an executive who worked for Chaplink, a Tokyo health food company, on Wednesday for allegedly violating Japan's Pharmaceutical Affairs Act. Jiro Gino, 48, faces charges of illegally earning money by selling natural tablets made of propolis, a resinous natural substance with infection-fighting properties as a cure for cancer. Ogino used propolis as the product marketed as a dietary supplement. She also put magazines that write her tablets can get cancer into a self-destructive pattern outside the waiting room in order to drum up business. Five cancer patients allegedly spent nearly 2,700 US dollars on the tablets. According to police, over the past eight years, 317,400 more tablets were sold without authorization, for a total of 28 million US dollars in revenues. Ogino was arrested and confessed to the crime. Family sues televangelists for selling cancer remedy. The family of a 34-year-old woman, identified by her last name, Ding, are suing a TV evangelist, Father Wu Long San. Father Wu is a Korean citizen and heads his own church, which he has dubbed the Good News Evangelical Church. Early last year in February, Father Wu recruited two women as part of his scheme to sell a cure-all remedy. Father Wu and his church members began to specifically target terminal cancer patients. Once a member located an interested cancer patient, they would contact Father Wu, who would schedule a time to meet with the patient, and he would bring along the two women. The two women would swear that they were cured by the remedy Father Wu was offering. Ms. Ding, who suffered from a fatal liver cancer, spent over 5,000 US dollars on Father Wu's remedy, yet died 10 days after beginning the fake treatment. Ms. Ding's family is now suing Father Wu, accusing him of being a con artist. Three other families have also come forward and are also suing Father Wu. Yet Father Wu continues to tout the miracle benefits of his health elixir and claims it can cure 53 different kinds of cancer. It makes you wish that lying could cause cancer. <laughs>